Today is Columbus Day, and I just got back from Minktoberfest in Punxsutawney, uh, Dom Powell's event that he puts on. Uh, what a great event that was. Had such a good time. Uh, lots of good friends there. Met a couple new people. Uh, it, it's just it's just wonderful. If you have not been to Minktoberfest, uh, you want to get it on your bucket list. And since I was there all weekend drinking trapline coffee, uh, I'm all ramped up and ready for trapping and uh, all caffeinated up. I figured I'd make a pretty good video for you guys and girls. Uh, I was saving a couple good tips uh, to make make a real good video here right before trapping season starts. So that's that's my plan. Um, today's Columbus Day and I uh, was going to go do a little bit of pre-work but uh, our crops are in the fields big time yet so it's gonna it's gonna be a little bit till I can go get some stuff ready on the trap line so it's a good day it's a good day to make a video so what I'm going to show you is how I make no weld conibert plates body grip plates um, I use you're gonna need a snuggy stabilizer um, and a product, and I'll show it a little better when I move the camera over to my workbench. It is a curved square heavy washer. Um, but they're, these are super simple to make. You don't need a welder. You can make them in a couple minutes uh, and make lots of them. So stay tuned. I will uh, set the camera up over my bench and I'll make one and show you and uh, see what you think of it. All right, guys and girls, uh, I want to start out by showing you the, the heart of this Conibear stabilizer setup. This is a three and a half inch by three and a half inch square curved washer. You can see the, the slight curve there and it comes with a hole in it. I don't know the exact size of that hole, but that hole is really important. Um, it's because of that we won't need to weld our stabilizer to it um, or, or drill it or any anything of that nature which is can be a real bear to do if you don't have a welder welding is impossible and drilling lots and lots of these uh, stable you know stabilizers or anything any kind you're, you're drilling a lot of metal um, it, it can be a chore so I, I buy these at a uh, steel supply place near me um, it is just, like I said, it's a galvanized three and a half by three and a half inch curved square washer. And, and the reason that I buy the curved one, you can buy these, um, you can buy them flat, but with a curved one, when I'm going to use a bolt to attach my Snuggie, uh, the bolt head will not make it rock. You know, if you're setting a lot of concrete, um, bridge wall type situations um, and you, you don't want your stabilizer rocking it is not going to rock on the bolt head with that curve it leaves a little bit of room um, so that's the initial most important part you need to make these the other thing is a snuggie this is a snuggie stabilizer um, it's spring steel and it's made by mark steck um with he used to have Dakota line snares. Alan Probst has that company now. I am not sure which of those two individuals you would get these from, um, but but that's a Snuggie made for you know smaller size body grip traps. Now I choose the Snuggie over the Killer Clip. The Killer Clip has been out a little longer, but I like the Snuggie better for one reason: it has a little bit better, bigger hole in it. Um, the, the killer clip has a small hole and your common standard machine screws will not fit in that hole. And if you ever tried to drill spring steel, it's a real pain in the butt. Um, this, this setup, there's no drilling, no welding. So I choose the Snuggie to make these. And, and it's, it's a really great product. I, I, I really like these Snuggies. Um, the other thing is you're going to need a box of number 10 by 24 
by three quarter inch machine screws. These are very similar to your brass trap pan bolts, your number 10 brass pan bolts, except these are just cheaper, you know, steel and are three quarter inch. Most, most of the trap pan bolts are half inch. So you're gonna need a box of them. You can pick these up at Lowe's. And the nuts, the number, the number 10 by 24 steel nuts. And then the last thing you'll need is fender washers. 3 16th of an inch by inch and a quarter. You need that inch and a quarter. So it's bigger than the hole in the bottom of your square washer. So this is how I put them together. I had one other thing. This is just a piece of one, uh, one sixteenth inch cable um, with loops on the end. And I this is what I use for attaching. So you don't have to weld something to the stabilizer for an attachment point. So I just have these kind of hanging out the side and I will attach my body grip, the end of my body grip chain with a carabiner or anything, even a piece of wire, anything, it doesn't matter. One thing is you're making these, you want to make your loop big enough so that it will clear the outside of the washer. Because if you have that ferrule, if that ferrule is under the washer, it's not gonna it's not gonna lay flat. But then you just simply take your machine screw, flip it over, and I kind of center it. Just center it in the in the middle of that hole, drop that on there. Center everything up, tighten it up, and that's just about done. I'm just gonna take a pliers and tighten her up real tight. Sometimes it twists a little bit. That, that is pretty good. Um, as you can see, that actually bends that washer, um, tightens everything up real nice. And I kind of, I always hold my, or keep my cable off to the one side so it doesn't get in the way of the animal walking. Um, but I like to set them like this. And then I hook my, I, I keep my spring side to here with the chain so I can hook to that loop. Now I tried turning these already, but um, so that it was more of a ramp going up, but I don't like that um, for the main reason. If you set them up like this, a lot of times you can put your body grip on there with the trigger wires on the top or on the bottom. It's a little bit more versatile like this. Uh, so yeah, that's all that's to this sort of deal. Um, how simple is that? How long did it take me to put that together? And it's this pretty good weight. It's pretty stable. I'll grab my other one here on the floor and just show you kind of what it, what it ends up looking like. I spray them. I don't spray the bottom, but I spray paint them. Uh, with a product, it's Rust-Oleum makes it. It is self-etching primer, um, and it works. It sticks a lot better to some surfaces than just regular primer. And it looks, to me, kind of like the stream bed color. Um, camouflages it up a little bit. But, you know, this gives you... It actually gives you a little bit of height, too. Um, so it, it, it gets... A lot, of, a lot of guys, when they're land trapping mink, um, dry, dry trail trapping... They like a little bit of height with their body grip. And this gives you this gives you a little bit of height. But it simply just sets down there and keeps everything pretty well stable. You can push the spring down to stable up a little more. Uh, there's really not a whole lot to this. Um, like I said, it's super simple. If you can find these washers, that's that's kind of the, the key. All right, I just want to show you one quick thing here. Uh, with this stabilizer. At, at Minktoberfest, Mark Zagger brought a product. Uh, it's made It's made by a company, I believe, in Michigan. Well, it is in Michigan uh, from the UP. It's called Uper Bound. Um, and it's called the PND Pan. It stands for Pan and Dog. Uh, and here it is on a Bridger 150. And it's simply, it's simply just attach it to your trap and 
It's very flat setting. It gives a really big opening. And the, the pan pressure is super light. I, I just cannot believe how feather trigger these things go off. And I had actually contacted the fella who makes them. And uh, I, I said, why don't you offset the, the attachment to the pan to the one side so it can be used with uh, killer clips or snuggy conibear stabilizers. But then when I finally got one to play with and try it, let me set this on there. Um, it actually, it actually works. A little bit tricky to get everything going in unison. But there you go. Uh, it, it actually works with, you can even center it up a little more if you want. But see, with that situation, I was thinking of this might work really well um, to eliminate using foot traps and catching raccoons in my top edge sets. I can use that. That stabilizer kind of a little bit off to the one side, but up against bridge walls on stacked rocks like you've seen in my other videos. Um, and catch the swimming, swimming mink with that pan. But um, they're a really neat product. I'm going to order some. Uh, like I said, Uper Bound PND pan. I'm going to order myself a bunch of them. Um, set them up in a bunch of uh, small body grips for mink. And I'll, I'll do a video... I'll do a video on, on tuning them. I have them pretty well figured out, just playing with this one, um, how to tune them for pan tension and whatnot, you know, depending on what trap you put them on. But uh, like I said, this this was a, just a quick tip I wanted to share. Um, and if you can find them washers, you're, you're going you're gonna to love them. But I'll be doing a few more videos probably once once I start fox trapping. I'll probably do a few uh, few videos, tips and whatnot on fox trapping. So stay tuned and uh, I'll do my best to put out quality info. Uh, if you follow my Facebook page, TS Trapline, I'm going to put a lot of tips and whatnot on there too. And I'll share my YouTube videos on there as well. But um, like I said, thanks for watching. And have a good trap line. It's coming quick.